In this video, I will be going through all the best and only weapons you need for your custom loadout in GTA Online in 2023. I will be going through all 8 categories of weapons and letting you know the best ones to have available for each slot. There have been several new guns released in GTA Online since last year's Ultimate Weapon Loadout, but are they good enough to make this year's cut? This is the GTA Online Ultimate Weapon Loadout for 2023. So without further ado, let's get to it. Before we get started, I get asked a lot about my settings. Make sure your field of view for first person is maxed out to give you a wider peripheral. And then while in story mode, set your targeting mode to assisted aim full. This will allow you to switch targets much quicker when shooting, as shown later in the video. Everything else will be personal preference. So first, you will need to know how you can customize your loadout, which means getting rid of the guns you don't want so you're not forever searching through many, many weapons just to get to the one you're after. To do this, you will need a gun locker. These are available in several places, as shown here. My personal favorite is the agency, as your spawn location is very close by and can also quickly grab some snacks, armor, and stock up on ammo while here. You then have the option to hide or show each weapon in its respected category. Once you have chosen your loadout, to activate it, you go into your inventory and select Enable Custom Weapon Loadout. This can be turned off by simply disabling the loadout, which will give you back all your own weapons again. So now you know how to customize it, let's get to filling it with the best weapons. So what you looking for? The first category we're going to look at are pistols. Last year, I only selected two handgun options, but I've had a lot of feedback saying I should have added the Heavy Revolver Mark II with special ammo. You can either opt for the incendiary rounds or the full metal jacket rounds, but for entirely different purposes. The incendiary rounds give more damage to all types of enemies, where the full metal jacket rounds are designed to penetrate bulletproof glass and take out vehicles. So let's look at incendiary rounds first. These are great for one hit kills on NPCs, but the gun in general does have a very slow fire rate, meaning it's not great for multiple enemies. Against the player with full health and armor, it takes two shots before they will die. As you can see, firing first still doesn't kill the player as I'm already rinsed before I can let off the second shot. As for the full metal jacket rounds, it can't penetrate doors or kill a player with full health and armor in one hit. But it can shoot through bulletproof glass, meaning the glass isn't even actually bulletproof. Against a player with full health and armor, it takes three shots before killing. Not ideal when the chances are they won't be sat there waiting to get shot. Against choppers, it is possible to take one out in one shot by hitting a tail rotor. Otherwise, it can take up to six shots before it blows up. Ultimately, there are better and more consistent ways to take down choppers, which we'll get to later. So should you have it in your loadout? Only if everyone you ever encountered always had half health. So for that reason, it's a no. Now onto the handguns you do want. The first is the AP pistol. An immense fire rate for a handgun and superb for headshots while in first person at close and medium range. But where it really shines is while driving, as it's easily the best weapon to use against enemies due to its clip size of up to 36 rounds with the extended magazine, coupled with its fire rate. If you're playing on console, where it's much more difficult to free aim, the AP pistol is the weapon of choice. It makes short work of most opponents once you get used to using it while driving. The other handgun is a very unique one, and it's the up anatomizer. This comes in very handy when knocking down fences you can't climb. But it's mostly used for getting stuck vehicles out of unfortunate circumstances. A godsend when you get a selling vehicle jammed. It's also fun knocking tryhards off their oppressors. Ah! 
there's only one machine gun you'll ever need and it's the Combat MG Mark II. With the extended magazine, it can hold up to 200 rounds. More than enough to do what you need to do without being caught out reloading. You can equip it with a selection of special ammo, but this has never been necessary as the thing is so brutal to start with and this will reduce your magazine size. It's not great at range when playing in third person due to its significant recoil, but get into first person and it's a whole different story. Not only is the range very good, but the lack of recoil now makes it a monster. Every loadout needs a silenced rifle and there isn't many better than a carbine rifle Mark II. Very easy to use and highly accurate, it's great for those pesky stealth missions. You're doing good out there. You also have the options to equip special ammo, but this won't be necessary if you're only using it for the stealth missions against NPCs. Life invader glass substrates. For everything else, you want the special carbine Mark II. Still the reigning king of assault rifles, this can also be equipped with special ammo, but this won't benefit you much as you need to constantly go to restock. Like the carbine, the special carbine is highly accurate but with added firepower. With the exception of the assault rifle, which is just terrible, there isn't much to choose from between all the other rifles as they are very closely matched. But having tried them all, they either have worse recoil or give less damage. The special carbine is my default weapon because it's good at everything. There's only one sniper you need and that's the Heavy Sniper Mark II. There are a range of special ammo types, one being armor piercing. At a reasonable distance, both the armor piercing and the standard ammo can be one shot kills. And even further distances, both need two shots to kill. The best ammo to use is the explosive ammo. The explosive ammo has the ability to knock down an enemy if it does not kill them in one shot, leaving them vulnerable to be finished off. But for me, its main use is taking out vehicles. Most will only need one hit before blowing up. But choppers will need two. highly accurate in all situations and is probably the best weapon to use to prevent getting overwhelmed. With regards to the scopes, many reckon the thermal scope is best. Personally, I prefer using the thermal lens on a helmet while equipping the advanced scope on the sniper. The advanced scope zooms in further than the thermal scope, meaning your target is easier to hit. I have experimented again with the other sniper rifles just to see if I missed anything and the answer is no, they all suck. The new precision rifle in the sniper category is barely even a sniper and it's absolutely garbage. The most powerful shotgun is easily the Pump Shotgun Mark II, especially once you equip the explosive slugs. It's devastating against vehicles, blowing up cars mostly in one shot, but also against players where from a good distance one shot can knock them over, leaving them easy to finish off with no retaliation. It can hold up to 32 explosive slugs before needing a refill, which should be more than enough for most situations. The Assault Shotgun is overall one of the best guns in the game. The combination of power and fire rate make it capable of destroying enemies within milliseconds. You're wide open! Ah! 
Devastating at close range, it's the best weapon to use in tight spaces. Okay, shit! Alright, go to the bridge! It's also brilliant for shooting from cover because of its lethal spread. Be sure to equip the extended magazine so it can hold 32 rounds instead of just the 8 before reloading. Both the minigun and the Widowmaker are great at quick attacks on multiple vehicles, especially if you're aiming for the windows of cars. They're also great at taking down choppers, as a few hits on the tail rotor will send them spinning to their demise. For PvP, they are superb at pinning down enemies behind cover, and as soon as they pop out, they are done for. The minigun can only be unlocked once you've hit rank 120, whereas the Widowmaker can be purchased straight away. There really is no noticeable difference in handling or performance between the two, it's really down to personal preference, so I'll let you decide which one you pick. When it comes to the RPG versus homing launcher, they both have their pros and cons. The RPG delivers much more damage to vehicles. but the range is less than half of that of the homing launcher. The main benefit of the RPG is how it can hold 20 rockets before having to refill. The homing launcher only holds 10. What most people would use the homing launcher for, which is locking onto flying vehicles, is pretty much obsolete as there are better options available. and any half-decent pilot can dodge them with ease. Personally, I don't use the homing launcher, mainly because it has a habit of locking onto vehicles you don't always want to be aiming at. So again, it's up to you which one you go for, which will suit your style of play better. A brand new and much anticipated weapon is the Railgun. The Railgun is slightly less powerful than the RPG, where it won't always kill a player in one hit depending on the distance, but if you're shooting them from this distance anyway, you're playing the game wrong. Where it really shines is against vehicles, like choppers, cars, oppressors and even jets, taking them down in just one hit. To get something like the Savage, it takes three shots. Unlike the explosive sniper, there is a slight delay in when the projectile will hit, so you have to aim accordingly. It is a free aim weapon, but feels like it should be aim assisted. 
At the time of making this video, the railgun isn't meant to be available in online yet. But thanks to this guy, there is a deathmatch you can play which gives you a random weapon each time you respawn. So just keep blowing yourself up until you get one. Once you have the railgun appear in your inventory, simply quit the game mode. The railgun will then be saved in your weapon wheel. Now just force a save by changing clothes or buying ammo. To restock your railgun, simply go and buy all ammo from your inventory. This is likely to be patched in the near future, so hurry while you can. I'll leave links to the jobs in the description below. Certain jobs may remove the railgun from your weapon wheel. If this happens, just repeat the steps in the deathmatch again. When the railgun will officially be available, you'll be able to buy it from the new weapons van. You also want to add a grenade launcher. The best abilities of the launcher is how you can rapid fire grenades at enemies while still hiding in cover. and how it's a great tool to use to get to those hard to reach places when someone is camping. Its baby brother is the compact grenade launcher. This is a great weapon to have as it equips you with the ability to shoot grenades while riding on a bike, making it much easier to destroy attacking vehicles over the use of sticky bombs. Speaking of sticky bombs, they are another must have in your arsenal. Probably the best weapon to use for setting traps as you can detonate them on your own command. Another great use for them is how you can chuck them at the same time while aiming your weapon. They are also brilliant for throwing from your car at any trailing attackers. Very similar to the sticky bomb, only the proximity mine self detonate when a target activates it by getting too close. The downfall of this is how easily they can be spotted by non-NPC players, especially at night due to their bright orange flashing lights. They also let off a loud beep to let you know you're getting too close and giving you a chance to run away. Let's be honest, there is no real need for a melee weapon, but as there is a free spot to use, it may as well be used by the stone hatchet. This has a very unique ability where it grants you near invincibility once activated upon your first kill. This will stay active as long as you keep killing within the cooldown time period, or will stop after you die. It's pretty fun to use, but if you need to use it, it's probably because you're not very good with guns. Girls are Venus. Some people said I should have added the knife, as it's probably the best weapon to use underwater. My reply is if you're fighting someone with a knife underwater, you're doing GTA wrong. I'd also like to add the flare gun to that list, as many people think it diverts homing missiles away. It sure does, but try telling that to my oppressor Mark II when it's spamming missiles at you. So there you have the ultimate weapon loadout you need in GTA Online in 2023.
let me know in the comments how your loadout compares. So if you found this video useful, please drop it a like and maybe consider subscribing for more. I'm Beats now, and I'll see you in the next one.